Mi, 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 mi. Yeah, I'm sure somebody will tell me that I'm tone deaf. And um, I have to say that I wouldn't say that I'm tone deaf. I'd rather say that I am not trained to recognize tones. <laughs> yeah, I'll put it that way. Um, music has been one of those areas where I have basically put off developing myself further even though I've had a bit of opportunity over time um, but we'll get into that later this video is really supposed to be a happy new year's video and just a short recap video I don't have a script and the last few times I attempted to make this video this is actually take six right now that I'm doing and so far I have maybe over an hour of rambling so I'm going to try to cut it down to under 20 minutes hopefully under 10 minutes in this one so firstly it's coming up to the end of 2013 um, I want to thank everybody who supported me over the years because I've had my YouTube channel now for I think, I think it was since 2006 2007 and I have to check the records but either way this is 2013 now so that puts it at um, over <coughs> excuse me more than five years so um, anything that goes on for that long even if you don't do it every day you know it's it's something significant I mean that's time enough to uh, get maybe one or two degrees in terms of um, bachelor's master's associate or something like that um, I'm not sure in terms of esoterics how that would go but that's the that story altogether um, I wanted to say though that As we looked for, as we look forward to 2014, I want to wish everybody the best. I really do, and I wanted to leave you with something that was hopefully useful um, in 2014. But alas, instead you'll just have to put up with my rambling, or maybe find something better to listen to. But hopefully, I wouldn't ramble too long anyway. So please just bear with me. Um, looking back at the past, the reason why I didn't do any more gameplay videos is simply because I didn't have the equipment and when I could have afforded the equipment, um, I spent a lot of that money on other things like traveling to Japan and also on furthering my education. So there were useful things. Um, I say furthering my formal education but traveling to Japan was also an educational thing in a different way. Um, it was the first time I really did a project like that of my own initiative and it was um, exceedingly difficult at first. I guess people that travel a lot may take it for granted but I had not traveled, I had never traveled totally on my own in the sense of actually like making the arrangements and everything like that. Um, I traveled on business but that was a case where like the company was working for me the arrangements so I didn't realize how much logistics went into it and also because it was an extended time and going to a new country and stuff like that and also I had like um it was it was something like a call but the doctor had a specific name for it something to do with mast cells he basically said my immune system was overperforming and that it was trying to fight against death that was no longer there or something something like that anyhow it was it was interesting to learn about that um I didn't really know the immune system could overperform to the point where it makes you like appear to be sick. But um, that was uh, at that time a unique experience. Hope I never have to go through it again because it was extremely annoying. Um, I guess having a broken foot or something so might be annoying. I fortunately never broken a bone in my body, but I can tell you having a cold to me is more annoying because. Having a cold stops you from breathing properly and you don't realize how important breathing is because you do it automatically until, well not necessarily until you have a cold, you could also realize it if you nearly drunk or if you like are exercising and have to catch your breath or you can just realize it someday when you do deep breathing and, and appreciate how much better you feel. So there are many ways to gain higher appreciation of breathing. but let me tell you that having a cold or so cold like symptoms for an extended period of time is really awful and I don't want to ever go through that again so um, fortunately um, 
since that time, I don't think I've had even the slightest inkling of a call. Like right now, you might hear a little bit of something in my voice, but that is, yeah, that is mostly dust because of um, the space that I'm in right now. And um, I'm probably not going to even show it. I'll probably just upload a logo over my voice. Um, you can't see the dust in the video anyway, so you just have to take my word for it that it's there. And unfortunately, um, I'm going to have to do a lot of work to alleviate that. I can't really get rid of that without spending a lot more money on renovations, which I will eventually one way or another, but that's another story altogether. Um, right, so money. Money is really tight right now, so I won't be, um, I probably won't be getting video equipment to do um, gameplay videos anytime soon. Um, maybe in the latter half of 2014, but no promises. And um, I have to really consider if I really want to take that up as a major hobby because I find that I get really dedicated to my hobbies. It takes up a lot of time, but it also takes away a time that I probably should be using to do other things. Um, I did a couple of online courses early up in the year and I didn't realize how much time they could take. Even, even the unaccredited ones that you just do for fun. Um, but in order to get something out of it, you really have to put a lot into it. Um, so they're, they're like part-time jobs to me, you know? Um, I am the type of person that likes to do things seriously when I do do them. Uh, what else did I do? Well, Japan was actually last year. You can still see the videos there, and that was 2012. Um, this year was more about um, consolidation, reform, and um, more about personal development and self-awareness. Things that we sort of give lip service to, but in, when it comes to actually doing the work, it's another story altogether. Um, because nobody can really see when you're developing as a person, necessarily, although my muscles they get a little bit bigger. You can sort of see them if I flex or something. Um, well, a little bit. It's not like I look like a muscular person or anything. I still look quite slim. And I still have this, um, I don't, still don't have any sort of six pack or anything like that, although I do have stronger abs. Um, it's not immediately obvious. I don't have a washboard or anything like that. Probably never will. Um, that's not my aim. I've already surpassed my goals in going to the gym in terms of improving my health. I've, I've also improved my endurance and even gained muscles and strength, so that's even better. Um, I will probably set different goals in terms of having more fun with my body because I used to do like um, a bit of capoeira. I was never really like um, extremely spe good at it, so um, I've been sort of hesitating to go back. Um, when I say that, there are a variety of movements that I was not good at because they require developing certain types of flexibility. So. Although I, I understand why it's important to do them, and I, in theory, would like to, in practice, I was just like, um, this is too hard, you know? It, it's fine to say that you're going to go all out to do something, but you need to get a reward out of it. And um, when it comes to something like, um, like, something like Capira, what you want to do is you want to be able to be fluent in Rhoda, you want to be able to have fun. And so for me, the cost of improving my fluidity was um, more than the cost of having fun in another way. So that's ultimately um, probably why I ended up doing things other than Capira over the years. It's not like I made a very conscious decision to stop Capira and start something else though. Um, it, it was always difficult for me to do physical things, so it's only really recently that my body has become strong enough that I can um, do physical things without much cost. But oftentimes, if I exercise one day for the next two or three days, um, sometimes I'd actually be sick. So that that was like the level of um, the level of cost that I had to bear with my um, previous activity or my previous lifestyle. Um, so oftentimes I would just like not go to classes because if I was working and I was like sick the next day I'm like well I have to make a choice do I want to be sick at work and probably get even sicker or do I want to like keep the job 
and you know maybe save up for a better time so um, I would curtail my exercise because for me exercise there's there's always a limit to exercise there's such a thing as exercise too much if you push your body too much it will get sick the, if you if you want to build muscles you use overcompensation which is where you literally break down your muscles so that they'll build a lot stronger the problem with that is that you need to rest sufficiently for it to build out stronger you need to eat sufficiently that it will build out stronger and if your body is at a stage where it's still healing from something else or or if your body is out of homeostasis static balance due to various concerns such as maybe it could be diabetes is one of the things that could cause it um then you you really need to um respect that and operate within the envelope of your body's you know activity um and it didn't help that i i had a lot of people that didn't understand it and you know they themselves may have have um have stronger bodies so they think that i'm lazy when i'm resting they they may have um delusions of grandeur and think that or some sort of religious delusion and think that if you just pray then everything will be okay um but i think it's um quite obvious i mean obviously if somebody if you have, have reached a point in life where you really are at that point where you just pray things into being then good for you but i think that in this era i can't see a single person that does that um even the most spiritual or religious person that that i've seen and that i've known or people that claim to be spiritual or claim to be religious or or, or whatever they have to work in the physical world and have to work within physical limits i don't see anyone walking on water and even people who um do various forms of energy-based healing have finite limits as well you know i don't see um anybody that has so far you know like lived for 300 years and still looks like they're 30. um i think that with the way that knowledge and medicine and so on are vaccine including knowledge of psychosomatic effects and um even knowledge of the spirit realm as advancing it may be possible that we're gonna see 200 years from now people who are alive now and look like 20 or 30 who are alive 200 years from now and look like 20 or 30. i'm open to that possibility but i don't see anybody who's come out and said yeah i'm 200 300 years old and they look like 20 or 30. but i do see some people who are like 60 or 70 you know even maybe even maybe pushing 80 who do look like they're closer to 40 or maybe even 30 because of a lot of um physical work that they did however you know they they're always in the gym and whatnot look at will smith will smith looks like the same for the last 10 maybe 20 years yeah i know he's not 80 but i'm saying that if these people and he's not even the best example um there is a guy that did joke to him though who's i think 60 going on 70 and he still looks young and fit then he had a recent shoulder operation because he pulled out his shoulder to learn in chapter or something like that but the point i'm getting at is like yeah i'm willing to believe that people can live longer than others um longer than you would have expected and i'm willing to believe that by physical effort um probably supplemented with with some sort of um positive philosophy because obviously if you have a negative attitude no matter what you do physically then that's going to pull down your body as well so not only that but you know you'll probably piss somebody off and they'll run you over a car but what i'm saying is that <clears throat> i don't think that any type of physical improvement can be accomplished without taking physical effort yeah no matter what sort of spiritual or mental or even social support you have i believe that what you do physically matters whether it be diet whether it be exercise whether it be sleep um perhaps the most overlooked asset is sleep and um, proper sleep which um certain things like even something as simple as having a cold can disrupt 
um, proper sleep is probably the most important thing. Um, and I don't think that people should run out and get sleeping pills or stuff like that in order to get proper sleep. I think that proper sleep is not something that is chemically assisted necessarily, but rather something that comes out of a really proper lifestyle and it requires a higher level of understanding of your body system and a higher level of commitment to sleep than we generally have. I mean, I say this while still having a fairly, um, I wouldn't say right, I have a fairly unusual sleeping pattern right now in the sense that I tend to do a lot of work early in the morning or late at night. And um, that isn't the best. The best thing to do is to be, or I would say that isn't the most natural thing to do. The most natural thing to do is to be in sync with nature. So basically sleep at night and be awake during the day. And so, But I'm living proof that it's not necessarily to be so synchronized in order to have at least adequate sleep, at least adequate functioning. And I do believe that adequate though is just a start and we need to really be looking at going to higher levels of performance both in terms of exercise and activity on the one hand and on the other hand in terms of sleep, repose and mental recovery. Because we need to give our minds time to recover, we need to give our bodies time to grow, we need to give our food time to digest, we need to give our emotions time to relax and we need to be able to do this despite everything else that's going on around us. Uh, it is important to have as good a social environment as you can make it and as good an economic e environment and financial status as you can, can get, but you can have the best friends and the best amount of money and still be making yourself sick by overworking. And I think that right now, overworking is probably the most prevalent and serious problem that people are dealing with. And second to overworking is a lack of gratitude. But if you're overworked, I don't see how you're going to get the emotional energy you need for gratitude anyway. Because you, you can't sincerely say, you know, you're really thankful for something when you're fighting your body to get it to do normal things because you're overworked and therefore underrested. And you could also be overworked not necessarily in terms of working too much in terms of time, but working too much in terms of the nutrients you're giving your body or stuff like that. So you can be malnourished without thinking that you're malnourished because your body may need specific nutrients to rebuild after maybe a trauma that you had maybe even years ago that your body just never fully recovered from but has been compensating but draining the liver or various stores of resources and you're only now feeling the effect years later you know there are a lot of things that go on in life that cause a change in your body and luckily we can find a lot more information nowadays and we can use it to prevent cancer to reverse a lot of conditions that um, we previously might have thought are irreversible and to overcome a lot of stumbling blocks, metaphorical stumbling blocks, of course. So um, that went off in a total rant and I know I, I haven't really talked much about myself so you, you probably don't really know what I'm talking about in terms of, well, it's not an interesting story. But um, if you can take anything away from my long rambling, I would just like to say that don't only be hopeful, don't only like pray, don't only think, but actually, you know, go past your problems and even past solutions and go to like a vision of a better way of living. That's what I'm doing continually because I haven't reached the ideal place. Maybe there is no really final ideal place, but there is always somewhere further a project you want to try or so on. But even in terms of where I want to be right now, there is a lot of um, progress that I want to make. And it wouldn't happen overnight, but um, 
it will happen faster if I work on it every day. So that's where I am in my life right now. And thank you for all the support. Um, I said I wanted to make this under 20 minutes, but I'm going to go along for another 5 minutes or so. I just wanted to say that to me, life is about inspiration. And you can easily get distracted by um, by pursuit of pleasure. In other words, you're just entertaining yourself or distracting yourself, but you're never really inspired. Um, I, I'm really inspired or encouraged by people who are creative and take a, like a creative path. And there are different types of creativity, but I'm not going to get into that right now. You can also be distracted by social concerns, by like, um, look at things from an ego-based level, like, this is who I am in society, which is basically how everybody talks and how just about every self-help health book is based, self-help book is based, sorry. So that's one of the reasons why, maybe not all of them, but that's one of the reasons why um, I think a lot of people don't benefit as they could from a lot of self-help books, because they may be able to improve how they feel on the ego level, but they may not. But you need an understanding that the ego is just one aspect of yourself, and it's not even the truest aspect of yourself. You can live without an ego altogether, but you can't live without, for example, motivation. Yeah. And inspiration helps to motivate us. And another thing that people can grasp on is like on realities which do not give a benefit but since they were impacted strongly on us we are sort of responding to that trauma and in positive ways which is still negative the either in an enforcement ways of a, enforcing the impact or in an antagonistic way of trying to fight against the impact but both of these are not effective in healing from the impact yeah, so you want to sort of like heal from indoctrination and the impact of empty riches that you've been fed. And the way to do that is not to argue against them as is commonly done, but really to shift over again to inspiration. Yeah, um, and to look again to discover yourself. It's not about finding yourself, it is about discovering yourself. In other words, you're covered, so you want to move the cover. And you move the cover by taking a look, by doing things. As you do things, you build up yourself. You build up not only a history, but you also discover things about yourself. You can't discover yourself by thinking about yourself or by unguided introspection. There are guided introspection techniques that can be used to enhance your expression of yourself, but then you only discover yourself again when you express yourself. So reflection is not actually meant to show you yourself. Reflection is actually meant to show you aspects of your potential self which you then make more clear by your actions or through your empowerment. And I think that's enough rambling for me for now. Um, if anything I've said is interesting, but unclear, I know all of it is unclear, but if any of it is interesting, then leave me a comment or something, um, and I will make another video to clarify whatever is not clear. Because I could make it more clear, but I didn't bother to write a script or anything like that. Um, but once again, all the best in 2014, and thank you very much for everybody who has been um, in encouragement and so on. Um, I guess less thanks to the few um, less helpful comments that I may have had, but to be honest, most of the comments and feedback I've had have been overwhelmingly positive, and thank you very much for them. Thank you for appreciating my videos, and I thank you. Also, for those people who have reached out and formed friendships with me over the years. It's been more than five years since I first been on YouTube, and it's been surprisingly beneficial. So, um, whatever happens in the future, I'm thankful for that.
and again 2014 is just around the corner so let's enjoy it all right later no 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 no